happy cheese comes from happy cows or a happy lab. So now there is a way if you don't love almond milk or soy milk or any kind of nut milk, uh, but you do want cow milk, you can have that without the cow, thanks to a new startup called Buttercup, uh, coming primarily from two guys, Ryan Pandya and Perumal Gandhi. Um, they have, they're vegans because they don't appreciate animal cruelty, but they want to eat pizza, damn it, as we all do. You That's know. always been a big issue. It's like, oh, I wish I could, you know, try to have like that vegan lifestyle, but to give up like cheese and milk, mm. I mean, that's hard. I mean, it's like really hard. a lot of people have, a lot of people don't, but a lot of people have the conflict of, I, do, I want to be a vegetarian mm. or I want to be a vegan, but I just, it tastes too good. And, and vegan, the whole problem with like vegan cheese and vegan milk is it doesn't taste good at all. Like it, it tastes bad, in my opinion, but um, or it just doesn't taste as good. I if guess you I should like say. It, you don't like if you don't it, like it, you don't like it. But opinion. it seems like they've they've fixed the problem. Yeah, and... because what they've been doing was um, they listed enlisted a third party company to three D print a DNA sequence that uh, corresponds to the proteins found in milk, mm -hmm. and uh, it's combined with a standard. Uh, Department of Agriculture Species of Yeast, which creates their basis for a cow-free cow milk. Um, and that they are, they're working to make this into milk products, like ice cream, oh, cheese, yes. butter. Well, because what it seems is that uh, using like the vegan cheese and the vegan milk, it, it's similar in a way, but it was like missing a cert some certain type of proteins yes. or, uh, and, and, well, they were talking about it in the lab. they put like vegan cream cheese on their bagel, right. and it was right. runny mm -hmm. and weird and unappetizing. And they were he was looking at it like this is lacking a protein. Yeah, we can there's, fix there's this. There's something that could hold this all together mm -hmm. and coalesce. It's just the right, you know, creaminess and tastiness. And it seems like they're putting that together on their own now, which it's it's a cool thing. I mean, we we also live in a time where other companies are working on making, you know, for instance, cow-free beef mm -hmm. or uh, creating I cow meat in that. a lab. Yes, and that it's run into problems here and there, which was they figured out how to synthesize the protein, but they couldn't add the right amount of fat to make give it the right taste. But it's apparently making leaps and strides and bounds and other source words uh, in the field, uh, but. It's still prohibitively expensive at this point. And what I like about um, the idea of this is that it seems like the milk companies that are actually using milk from the cows are mm -hmm. actually open to the idea of letting them into the industry as well. It doesn't seem like, how dare you? This is our mm -hmm. world. You know, how dare you take our milk? But it seems like <laughs> it seems like there's going to be room for everyone because I think the what the problem we have nowadays is that there's not enough. The reason why. Um, People are so like these. Some of these bigger companies are under such observation with animal cruelty. Is that there's not enough milk to go around? There's not enough product to go around mm -hmm. because there's so many people and there's so much need for it. Yeah. And um, and that's where animal cruelty comes in. To, you do you like read these things and you see exactly these you see these videos these and these articles. Poor animals are and treated it's, and it's and it's devastatingly like I, I can't even put words to it. Like you don't even want to think about it. Uh, but because having this coming into the market, I think they're hoping to launch it next year sometime, mm -hmm. I'm hoping, for consumer use. The end of 2017 is when it looks like, though I wouldn't hold right. tight it might to take that a little date. Long. It might be different. It might be a little longer. But if if you introduce this into the market, it kind of releases that um, tension. This may be I'm actually an eventuality can. one day because right. we do have a limited number of resources. Mm -hmm. Cows do take up a lot of research, uh, resources, a lot of water, which is very precious. And you know, I drink almond milk a lot because, Same. mainly because I like the taste, but almonds are also a, a big water hog. So if you, we try to think about conserving resources, but also uh, keeping the luxuries that we've grown accustomed to, mm -hmm. like delicious, delicious butter and ice cream, then you know this. This seems like the perfect melding of technology and tastiness together mm -hmm. to adapt to the world because it is changing, and it may be something we have to really think hard about in the future. I mean, this is like the step. It's one step closer to getting a replicator in Star Trek, in my mind, where I'll be like, first step, chocolate ice, ice cream. cream, and then there you go. <laughs> it's all it is. Up oh, protein and the 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 chemicals and whatever else they're gonna put in it, I don't care. As long as it tastes the same, I'm good. Right now, all we have is Earl Grey, hot. Uh, but one day, will be ice cream, I hope, mm -hmm. I hope. Um, I like <laughs> the idea of this. I would definitely try it. 
it's a good solution to a lot of environmental and uh, other issues. I hope um, it's not too, too expensive to the point where I can actually buy this and try it. Audience, would you try cow-free cow milk? Please let us know below in the comments and please like and subscribe for more.